up and running. Okay, we're live. <laughs> so you can do your countdown, Jerry. Okay, right. good. I'm to take I am now officially Brux Strongville on Twitter. <laughs> awesome. Uh, <clears throat> you showed that on Twitter, yeah. right, Ramses? I am about to right now. Do yeah, it. I share everything on Twitter. I've just taken my shoes off. Yes, sir. Now officially Brux Strongville. I was just waiting Twitter. for you to give the signal, so. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wait. Shoot. What? I forgot. Uh, I have the thing running still. So. <clears throat> you showed that on Twitter, down. right, oh, Ramses? In the background. I am about to right now. Yeah, share everything on Twitter. I've just taken my shoes off. We're 43 episodes. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Have we really been doing that many episodes? 43 episodes. We we just passed our one year mark. You know what? This is the longest podcast I've been in. Anyway. Well, it's interesting because we're going to have to eventually do our 50 episode spectacular. Soon. With Anyways, full exclamation points afterwards. Jared, we're like live, so I'm just waiting for you to count down now. Okay, then uh, we'll start the show in five, four, three, two, one. You're listening to The Secret Stage, a Scarlet Rhapsody podcast. Hey everyone, welcome to Secret Stage. I am your host, Jared. With me is the main crew. Yes, we have both Ramses and Miguel. How you guys doing? Good, great. Could it be better? Ramses? I was about to write down Adventures of Pit again. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, on that note, um, probably just gets the show started because we've got some new stuff to talk about and maybe a little free topicing afterwards. We maybe continuation of our last conversation about uh, video game related cartoons. We'll see. But right now, Miguel, what, what, what are you playing right now and what have you been playing this week? Right now, I'm showing off a new released indie game called Adventures of Pip. That's out on Steam and on the Wii U. $14.99 is for you to purchase. Get out there and uh, buy it. It's a great game. It's, it remixes a lot of elements of a lot of platforming action games, so go for it. I've also been playing a lot of Destiny with their DLC House of Wolves. And that's pretty much been it, mostly. And if you want to check out our first part of Adventures of Pip, you can find that. Um, that should be on our YouTube channel right now, right? Uh, I haven't uploaded it yet, but it should be up by later today. Okay. Oh, well, by the time, one. Well, by the time you listen to the, if you're listening to this on the, on our edited release, then it should already be out. And if you're listening live now, it should be out very soon. So you can check out the first half of his gameplay as well. You can still check out the first half on Twitch. It's still available right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, That's but assuming, listen to us you, first. Yeah, yeah. Listen to you first, <laughs> then go watch the first half. All right, Ramses, do you want to go with what you're, you're playing? Uh, okay. Uh, I've been playing a lot. I've been playing a lot because like I recently started putting in a little bit more time with my because I put in some new RAM on my computer. I did, I, did I mention this on the last show? You did. Yeah, I, I started fooling around a little bit more of the games I, I had in my backlog. Just been doing stuff like that. Um, I realized why I stopped playing uh, Monster Hunter. It wasn't because of the bad people, it was because of people with bad connections all over the place, especially on my ranking, and I'm like, I just want to fight a monster, damn it! So instead, I've been taking on my frustrations and anger on another game that's also kind of like, in that same vein of like, you know, good luck, good luck flushing your life down the toilet, and that is GTA V. I've been playing with the Shinjuku Station people, including uh, Amuro NT1, uh, Autumn, uh, uh, Autumn 4, and Mula Flaga. By the way, not, not, to, not, to be, not to be confused with the character O from Gundam Wing, but yeah. uh, other, char other, other personalities from the Shinjuku Station, you know, peanut gallery that, that do when they do the podcast that we talk and stuff like that. We all decided to just start playing one day, and, well, that's become my obsession now because it's like, well, I, it's, I, I, think, I, think, I think I was saying The Godfather 2. Mm -hmm. That's when you think you got away, they just pull you back in. Yeah, it's how it is sometimes. And it it's so much like that, so much so with um it's so much like that so with with GTA five to the point where I'm like, I don't know like what am I doing with my life? <laughs> and then another game I I've also been streaming a little bit of games as well. I recently streamed um I got recently streamed Ghost the uh, Goat um, Simulator for the stream and if you want to see how broken the world can get with just how random, like how with a randomized layout that I had, uh, go watch it. I uploaded it to uh, to our YouTube. It's um, it's insane. 
Like, it's it's literally me breaking the world and falling to the world. But I love it because of that because it, that's what makes it unique. It's so fantastic. Yeah. It's awesome. Thank you. Let's see. What else have I been playing? Oh, I also, I also streamed a little bit of Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, which is like, finally, I have a, I, I had a reason to do, to play Ultimax. I thought, and I, I did pretty well, I think. No, I didn't. Not at all. No, not at all. And I also been playing Skull, I also played a lot of Skull Girls. I actually brought, because they actually had a sale. Mm-hmm. I never bought Eliza. Hmm. I got Eliza. Uh, Squiggly. I never bought Squiggly. What? I never bought. What? You didn't get it when it was free? No, I got the, I got her app. I I bought her, I bought her. No, what was it? I got it. I got the game just as Big Ben was about to be released. Oh. Yeah, but the, I not anymore. I'm caught up now because I have not just. I not only do I have Squiggly, but I also have the the color packs as well. So oh, I have sales. Giving us the excuse to buy more games. Dude, it was 99 cents. Why not? I think it no, should be I'm, I'm still giving you a hard time. I'm giving you a hard time. That's a great deal. Yeah, that is fucking amazing. I loved it. And that's why I, I said, no, you know, that's like that's like a that's that's like a pack of gum nowadays. Fuck it. I'm going to buy that and buy some DLC. Let's rock. And I, and I, I've, I'm literally kicking myself for not buying Squiggly in the first place. Mm. I'm like, why did I miss out on this character? She's amazing. I love it. And after that, what else have I been playing? What game did I play? Oh, I played Jurassic Park. God. Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> if you want to see a disaster, it should be on YouTube. Wow, I mean, I love the game still, but man, that game was that game was that game was that, that was like a train wreck. Be playing it on stream. But I don't regret it. Extreme us co-oping again because co-oping is fun. All right. Yeah, we were, it was like a co-oping, but it's like everyone was a was a backseat gamer. Well, no, that one. Yeah, everyone's a backseat gamer because of just how the game is is running. But um, we've only only all of us have come together on a game only with hundred percent orange juice, and we need to do it again. Do it oh my god! Another no no CPUs. No together. CPUs this time. No CPUs. Well, that's oh. just, I mean, like there's other games, and we'll, we'll talk about it probably after show to see what. All of us have that we can kind of do that, but I, I'd like to do that again, just because I always feel kind of semi left out. All right. Um, my gaming has been pretty slim because of work-related reasons and uh, comic book-related reasons, but I've been dividing my time amongst three games. The first is Mass Effect because I grabbed that as part of the uh, Mass Effect trilogy when that was on sale, and I'm almost done with all the side quests, so I can just finish the story and just move on to either playing two or possibly achievement whoring in one again. I'm going to flip a coin on that. We'll see how I feel when I get there. On my DS, I went, I've been way too obsessive with stupid uh, Pokemon Shuffle. I have now S-ranked all 190 missions, and I have all of the expert Pokemon captured, and it's the last day of the event to get the Venazar Stone. Uh, so you get Mega Venazor, and Unfortunately, I just got I just got knocked out of my uh, ranking position, and means I either have to, you know, really knuckle down and try to get that rank, or just go oh to hell with it. So we'll we'll see how I feel later tonight. But most importantly, I've been playing a game that's just been like completely making my life better. It is called Super Robot Wars J for the Game Boy Advance. Oh my God, do I for, I always forget how much I love the Super Robot Wars games. And the only flaw that this franchise really has in my mind is that their games are so freaking long. This is like not only just going through like a, a mission usually take about an hour, but almost all these games have like at least 40 missions. Which I know people go like, well, that's a lot of bang for your buck. I get that. But here's the deal. They also have alternate paths you can take. So like with Jay to, to do every single sequence with every single different character, you'd have to at least play the game four times. And I'm like, screw that. Like, I like this game and I like the characters and stuff like that. And I'm curious about the alternate roads. That's, let's just say hypothetically, it takes 45 hours per run through of the game. Times four is 180 hours. I'm not, not freaking doing that. That's a lot of my life to dedicate to see all the different routes in a game. 
Like, I'll probably play it once with the boy character and once with the girl character, and I'm probably going to be done after that and probably move on to a different Super Robot Wars game. But in the meantime, I'm loving the fact that I have the Nadesco characters teaming up with the Mazinger characters, teaming up with... Um, Tekken Man Blade. The Tekken Man Blade, which I just finally got uh, Blade to join my team, which is awesome. So it's, it's kind of fun having all these different characters, and, and that's not even all the series. There's like... Uh, like 12 different series in this game because I still haven't had any of the Gundam Seed characters show up, uh, none of the G Gundam characters. Um, I don't have uh, the Full Metal Panic characters. I don't have Voltus 5. I don't have. Uh, aren't the uh, Under Charge Counter Attack characters in that game? No, there's only two Gundam series in that game. It's G and Seed, which okay. is freaking weak sauce. And there's no uh, Getter characters at all in the game. Okay. Which is also weak sauce, because I might not be the biggest fan of Getter, but freaking a mecha that can become three different kinds of mechas based on how the little ships combine and has different moves based on that is really useful for versatility. It's like, oh, I'm on a water level. Okay, hold on. Switch, switch. Okay, now they're awesome. Oh, we're in a flying level. We're in a sky level. Okay, switch, switch. Okay, now we're awesome. We're in a ground level. Okay, switch. And I like that versatility, which you don't get as much. I think there's like 12 different series, and I think I probably have characters from six series right now, I think. Five okay. or six series at this point. So there's still a lot more to do, and I'm not even close to me. I'm not even close to the halfway mark. I'm like on mission seven or eight. So this, this game does take a while, and it's kind of cool to get all the different characters. And eventually I'll be able to retire characters that I don't particularly want to use so that I can use other characters. But I realized that the alternate ro routes will also unlock specific... Oh, um, Zio, Zio Miner or something like that. Zaymir? Something like that is one of the other... Zaymir. Zaymir. Um, that's also coming up. Because there's actually, uh, in the things I was looking up, there's a specific route you have to take to get great Zaymir. So you have to take a specific route to get that if you want it. But then you sacrifice a lot of the other side characters you could get. Because mm -hmm. I guess... I assume it's just that broken. It's like, bad news, your team isn't as large as it could be. Good news, you have a broken mecha that could just annihilate the last boss. You know by the way, by the way, um, one good thing, just just, a little, just to preference, this game is a new game plus. Yeah. So it's like, I think, so it's like, maybe, because like, maybe, since you're saying the game might take like 45 hours, I think mm -hmm. after that it might take like, what, like 20 and one, once you get powered up, maybe even more after you get yourself more powered up. Yeah, and it, it has the feature that's maybe you can, maybe do, maybe you can do it like in one good sitting if you're like if you're like if you just Uber max out everyone. Yeah, well, I, I think it's one of those things where uh, one of the uh, functions they have in the game is called favorite series, and it's a function they did in a game prior to this one too. And I think a few have had it after. Where basically you select a couple in this time in this case you select three series of like the twelve, and basically they can upgrade further than normal. She'll, you'll get extra slots. So this time around, I chose Voltus Five, Mazinger, and Full Metal Panic, which is great, except for the fact that the only of those series I have characters from is Mazinger right now. So, mm. well, but they have a lot more they can upgrade. So it actually gives me a lot more versatility in how and, and how I can power them up and make them more powerful. So, all right, it's so just think um, it to just have these ultra powered mechas in like your plus game. Yeah. All right. So. Um, well, so so with that in mind, you know, recommend it. Oh yes. Okay. By all means, um, I need to play more uh, games in this franchise in general, just because I, I love this franchise. And look, if you're a fan of, you can play this from two perspectives. You're a fan of giant robot anime, you'll love this game. But if you like tactical games that actually require you, that actually have a lot of customization, this is actually a really good series for that. Even if you don't know who these characters are or what their backstories are. That doesn't matter. You can still enjoy it as a really good tactical game. All right. So is that it? Yeah, that's all I've been playing. All righty. Let's get on. Let's get this. Let's get the show on the road, shall we? Yep. News, news, and more news. Surprisingly, because we're only a week out from E3, so. Or, well, well, we haven't done the show in two weeks, also, and it's just like the the, the swell is coming in. We can the high yeah. tide starting to come up. That that. And then it's like eventually that 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 um, high tide that eventually is going to become like that tidal wave that's going to hit us. Yep. A uh, game that first part of news is a game that actually made the boss lady get a little bit excited. She wants to check it out. Fallout Four has finally had its little uh, trailer released. 
you know, it's, it had its War Never Changes line because you have to have that. That that is Fallout. It'll be taking place in a bombed out Boston. Looks like it's going to be pretty cool, and it's going to be for the next generation systems, or and of course PC, and it's Bethesda, so expect bugs. But that being said, this is one of those things that's pushing me towards wanting to get a next gen console, but. It also pushes me towards wanting to get a souped up PC because then I can actually aim with my mouse, which is just so much more natural for me. But I'm looking, I'm looking forward to this one. I, I love Fallout. I never picked up New Vegas just because all oh, three was done by Bethesda. Well, New Vegas was done by one of their other uh, side companies, but three had so many things to do and so many different routes you could choose and things like that. So. And then the DLC, like five different DLC missions, all of which had like multiple missions within them. And so it was just so much content that I just never got around to playing New Vegas. But I'll, I'll say this, if New Vegas is on sale, and it probably will be in the near future, if it hasn't already been and I just missed it. Yeah, it's currently, mind actually, uh, currently is. Yeah, I wouldn't mind actually grab that. I don't know if I can run it on my laptop though, unfortunately. Uh, I'd like to grab it and play through New Vegas just to check it out and just to give me that uh, Fallout fix. Because unfortunately, Fallout 3 is on my Xbox, which I do not have right now. So, wouldn't mind a nice Fallout fix, though. I did pick up one and two on GOG a while back, a good old games for those who don't use good old games. So, actually, I could go back and play one and two, which would actually give me a nice little happy nostalgia feeling. But yeah, I love this franchise. I'm glad to see another one in the game, and I'd like to curious to see what the changes will be. And as always, dog meat makes a return. So that makes that should make everybody happy. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know if you can do puppies this time like you can in three, but I assume you will. Continuing on, the next Star Wars. Well, you what was it like? They're saying that you can play as a dog. Huh. Well, we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, like I, I like I said, the only thing I have to say about Fallout because I, I, you pretty much took everything I wanted to say about the game. But yeah. I'm just gonna say this that it's it I I can't wait to go into your um, bummed out you know apartment and take all your and take all your do dolls if they haven't been already been melted by the nuclear holocaust. Mm hmm So yeah. Hey, one of them could increase your stats. So you know, Indeed. I'm fine with that. Uh, you know what actually be kind of cool for Fallout? I don't think they'll do it. But since you can have like a companion character to actually have co-op where you could have a human control your companion character, because that could actually be really, really helpful in certain fights or while exploring certain areas. We could just have someone else take control of that Brotherhood of Steel character or whoever you have as your teammate and could actually go and explore and do stuff in whatever, you know, burned out building you're in or they could cover you or what have you rather than just a really stupid AI that ends up shooting me in the back of the head half the time. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, Fallout 3's AI was kind of bad. Uh, but continuing on, the next Star Wars game has been announced, Priority 3. It is called Star Wars Uprising. It'll be for mobile. Um, they're claiming it's an RPG, but it looks like it's Clash of Clans style RPG, from what I can tell. It'll have co-op options. You essentially take side of one of three factions and battle in uh, the, oh, what's it called? The Enoat, Enoat se sector which uh, right now they only have three maps. They've announced a, a mining colony whose name I don't remember, uh, Cloud City, and Hoth. So you're, you're that side of the galaxy. You're in the, the Empire Strikes Back side of the galaxy. And essentially you're either going to be like a kind of a mm, pirate skilled kind of thing, the rebels, or these old aristocrats, this like aristocratic uh, families that used to rule this region. So unfortunately, you can't play as the Empire, which kind of limits my caring as much. Because the, the trailer is pretty cool, but I want to be with the Empire because the whole the whole trailer has this like dude doing this propaganda of like the Death Star is not destroyed, the Emperor is not dead, and anyone who tells you is a liar. And if you spread this kind of propaganda, we will find you and kill you. And I'm like, dude, I want to be part of like the Imperial like kill anyone who's spreading the truth squad. <laughs> I I, I'm pretty sure that, that will be a, a, like an eventual, like you know, new faction later on. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really feeling this. They do have pre-registration, and you can vote on some of the bonuses and stuff. And I was like, yeah, why not? Just, you know, put in put in your password and your name, you know, email and password, and do it. And I was like, yeah, why not? 
So I, I signed on to it. I don't know if I'll ever play it because I don't play mobile games as we've kind of established. Not because I don't have the capability of doing so, just because I never take the time to download and, and utilize them. So, yeah. Uh, continuing on, Gearbox has shown off a little bit of their new game, Battleborn. It is a MOBA-like shooter for next gen, complete with character classes and all that kind of stuff. It does have a storyline, and the storyline can be gone through as a single-player experience. Um, it's going to have co-op co with, with split screen as an option. And supposedly, the bonuses and stuff you get from playing will be persistent. Your character can go up to level 10, and then you have your player rank uh, level and stuff like that. And if you're into competitive kind of shooters and stuff like that, you could probably have some fun with this. Um, it's not really my cup of tea. But I'm sure they'll have some pretty good, you know, sense of humor to the game and probably have some fun with it. And who knows, maybe it'll run more like a uh, Team Fortress kind of game than what we're being told. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, if it's Gearbox doing Team Fortress, I'm freaking in. <laughs> but otherwise, I, I need to see the character classes and stuff like that before I worry about anything else. Yeah, uh, the character classes, it seems to be, like, more character-based than it is, like, you know... It's supposed to be more character based than it is like squad than it is like you know um, team uh, based. Yeah, because it seems like there's individual characters with their own with their own individual like gimmick, as opposed mm -hmm. to like a generic kind of like mold of character. I thought at first it was going to be that, but then they say it was like 25 characters in total. Mm -hmm. So it's like yeah, I think it's going to be like to her like if your own prefaces of how you uh, how you fly. Maybe that might be a medic. Who knows? For you, there might be like maybe a character for support. Maybe, yeah. there, maybe there might be like you know a rush down guy for me. I don't know. It's like I think it's just gonna be like your body con Dios. Yeah, we'll we'll just see. I'm I'm curious but not excited. I have no comment uh, on this game because yeah. In terms of things I am excited about, XCOM Two has been announced. Yeah, it'll be on PC. Um, no news yet of a port. May never, may not even get there. Who knows? Yeah, I'm assuming. I, I, I'm assuming it won't. But keep going. It uh, the trailer looks amazing. Uh, the general premise is that humanity has essentially lost the war with the aliens, and they've kind of taken over. And now the XCOM forces are essentially their own little black ops squad trying to take control of Earth back. It's a very different taste. A different different thing than the UFO invasion. And I'm kind of curious to see where they're going to go with the story in this and the upgrades and what have you. It's Independence Day, the role-playing game. It really kind of is. <laughs> but it's Independence Day, it's like the aliens officially won. It's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, they're just ruling our world. And now, like, the president and a handful of ragtag uh, farmers and stuff are, like, loading up their gear. Like, come on, Will Smith. take America back. Yeah. Even the, even the even the even even like the even the guys who are not from America like yeah America wait a minute <laughs> uh, anyways oh, England as well nope just America you guys are screwed but no still uh, it, it, but still like I, I, that's an interesting premise and I'm pretty sure this is gonna involve a lot of you doing like stealing alien technology and using it more more often than in the last game. Yeah, because like with the last game, it's like you can research and get better weapons from from them. But I'm pretty sure that's gonna be now an integral part of the game because it's like, well, shit, well, our weapons are shit, are shit, um, are shit tier. So we need to steal like few other weapons, reverse engineer it, and like and go at them hard. Yeah, but just I liked a lot of the little things you could do in the previous game, like the autopsies and stuff like that. Not only you get an interesting little discussion of what makes the aliens tick, but also. It'll give you some sort of bonus that'll make them easier to kill. Stuff like yeah. that. Uh, but it's interesting to add more stuff or maybe new types of missions where you can, you know, kind of do a whole like, hey, if you hear this message, you are the resistance. You know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Sorry, folks. I like Terminator Salvation because it's super cheesy but lots of fun. Yeah. <clears throat> but I'm not going to... I'm not going to rag on you. Anyways, keep going. Continuing on, um, a game that you and... Uh, you, Ramses, and Miguel both played, but I never had the chance to play. Infinite Crisis, uh, the kind of Dota-esque uh, DC game, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, Dota-esque, I guess, works. MOBA-type game. Yeah, um, MOBA. It's going to be canceled and shut down on August 14th. And no one, uh, and no one shed a tear. But 
That, that means I can't play as Gaslight Batman anymore. Well, okay, I think it sucks for me because I actually have, like, I have TV show Green Arrow on, on me. So oh. that's, so that's like, so that sucks for me because it's like, yeah, I like, I like using him. Maybe you can use him in Injustice, though. Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. But with that said, it's like, me, me and Miguel said something collectively when we heard this news. It's like, yeah, nothing you know, of value was lost this day. Yes. As much as I love the game, because it's a really simple game, the problem is that the, the, the barrier alone of entry is like so high, and just the, the minute, it's like, it's like, the, like they explain to you everything, and then you realize, wait a minute, you can just throw, you can, you can just ignore half the things they said, and just go at it by yourself. And that would that would have saved that would have saved a lot of time. Yep. And you know, it's a, and I feel kind of bad because like they've been developing, they've been trying, they've been in closed beta for a long time. Forever. Yeah, I remember. I remember getting some invites for that, and I was like, eh. Yeah, they've been they, they've been doing it for like I think the last two years, and it seems like kind of Saturday, like in one minute, bam. And so yeah, it's Marvel like, Heroes is still going strong. Yet again, another thing that Marvel done, has done better than DC. Hey, Hi-yo. you can play Kate Bishop in that game. And if you can play Kate Bishop in the game, it's awesome in my book. Yep. People, read Young Avengers. Young Avengers is awesome. Plus, if you do early Young Avengers, you get Iron Lad. Dude digs me some Iron Lad. Hmm. But, yeah, it's like... Uh, on one hand, I'm kind of like... Uh, on one hand, I'm kind of like... Uh, I'm kind of mad, but the other, it's like I'm with, I'm with Miguel... No, like you know, nothing of value, nothing of value lost. was lost. I don't know if yeah. I uploaded the. I don't know if I uploaded my my play. I don't know if I uploaded my play to it on YouTube, or I thought it was so horrible I didn't want to have it up on the record. But if it's on there, look at it. You you'll hear the thoughts that I had on it. I'm pretty sure I was pretty vocal on what I thought of the game when I was playing it. Yeah, you you were. Well, while we were kind of watching you, you were like, ah. <laughs> More to How long is this tutorial? Yep. I get it. I know how to play this style of game. Let me play the game. I know. Like as soon as I'm hearing that kind of stuff, I'm like, ooh, that's a, that is not a good sign. Yeah, I that was like, what the heck? I, 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 and then I decided to load the game, and guess what? It took me an hour to get out of that. Like no skipping, no nothing. It's like, I, I already played that, and I already played the old closed beta. So it's like, come on, get your get your shit together, DC. Come on. Yeah, so, so it's like, unfortunately, that, that won't happen. Which leads me to believe one thing. Are we going to get another win eventually? Probably oh, yeah, not. probably. Probably, what? probably not. All right. Well, I say they will, but not in, not, not, not in, in not any time soon. I, by the next two or three years. But I'm pretty sure by that time also, too, the, the MOBA, the, the MOBA, MOBA thing. will faded, but they'll have something else. Yeah. There's always going to be something. And DC's not going to sit around and let their characters just kind of, like, not... You know, make make them money. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So, what's next? Next is some EA news. Are you ready for this? My do, ass is ready. Do, 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 to see the '94 Chicago Bulls. <laughs> uh, FIFA. Bugs Bunny. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I wish EA would make a Space Jam game. Uh, but it will never happen because I'll have to make a deal with Warner Brothers games, and it's just not gonna not gonna work. Anyways, keep going. Um, FIFA 16 will be the first uh, game to feature the women's national teams. So that's kind of cool. If you love soccer and you like you prefer ladies' soccer over the guys' soccer, now you can play as the ladies' soccer. Well, not just that; it's time because that, right. Oh, you guys say it, Ramsey? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a timely thing because right now it's uh right now it's World Cup season for the women. Which I didn't know existed. So I don't know a lot about soccer, though. Honestly, um, you could go on and say, "Oh, you know, right now it's like U.S. national championships." I'm like, "Really?" And you're like, "Yes." And I would totally believe you, even if it wasn't. <laughs> well, th- not only that, I thought I always was, I was always under the assumption that the World Cup for the women are always fell in the same year as the men. Anyways, keep going. Uh, continuing on, uh, Spike Lee has been announced to be the writer and director for the. Uh, uh, career mode of NBA 16. So uh, Danny Aiello will, will appear as a really racist coach. Well, I, I hope not. 
Um, the story that's been announced thus far is that a, you'll play as a kid going, coming up from high school and being pushed into the big leagues instead of college, and all the decisions and choices that you'll have to make in that part of his life, and I'm assuming throughout the rest of the career, for however long career mode lasts. I hope that Spike Lee realizes that NBA rules prohibit NBA teams having to um, draft players out of high school, either, right? Probably they not. Have least, they gotta have at least like three years of college. Yeah, well, this is the storyline they're announcing, so probably not. Um, and I don't, why they didn't just make it that you just finished if your college team, and you know you could just easily jump that. But I think it wants to work with a younger protagonist, but they haven't. That hasn't been legal in the sport. Um, actually, I'll be yell. You're wrong. I'm wrong. Oh, you can actually. There is a whole list of. Like really good players that that got that got the right out of high school. Kobe Bryant, that, Kevin Garnett. That was, uh, yeah, that was before they, they were being trapped. That was the nineties. Yeah, LeBron that James. That was before. They made the law. They made the rule in the two thousands at some point. Let's see. Oh, actually, no. They're still here. Brandon Jennings. Uh, Jeremy Tyler. Oh, he's from. He's local. Uh, let's see. Omar Johnson. Those are actually more recent examples. Okay. That's weird, because when Miguel mentioned that law, I was like, oh, yeah, that's true, isn't it? Weird. Okay. There is kind of... I'm pretty sure they're going to play around with this, because there is kind of like a... There is kind of like things going on with this. So it could, that, that can play a lot into their... Um, into the story as well. So it could be really good. Yeah. It, it, it'll at least make it interesting. I think it's... A little much to grab Spike Lee, but then again, like, what's Spike Lee been doing in the last few years? Complaining about white people. What's it, What's his last big movie? Does anyone know what Spike Lee's last big movie was? I, I want to say he made one recently. I think he's directing like, a new movie. I think Spike he's... Lee. Da, 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 da. Uh, it's going to make me look really stupid because it's going to be some huge movie. Like, dude, he just did Avengers, Avengers 2 Age of Ultron, and I'm like, oh, that was him? Wow. Yeah, it was. It's pretty impressive. Well, actually, he. Actually, the last movie he made, and you know, it's actually good that we forgot about it. Old boy. Oh yeah, he uh, is directing a new movie, which actually the mayor of Chicago is kind of pissed about. Oh really? Yeah, it's called the it's working title is called Chirac, which is a combination yeah. of Chicago and Iraq. Huh. Oh. Yeah. And the mayor's right. kind of pissed because it's basically comparing the streets of Chicago to the war, you know, in Iraq. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that. Like yeah, I said, don't say Spike yeah, Lee's track gives yeah. Chicago a bad name. So the mayor of Chicago is not too thrilled about that. Versus oh, yeah. all the corruption that Chicago has been known for over the decades. <laughs> that won't give Chicago a bad name. Everyone knows on the fire, ladies and gentlemen. Me neither. Anyways. By the way, here's, here's here's Chicago. Here's how you fight back against that. Oh, man. You're totally. Your movie. Yeah. Mmm. This pizza is so good. Mmm. Mm. Deep dish, so delish. Can only get it here, otherwise it just doesn't taste right. Mm. Our movie making fun of our city. Whatevs. We got pizza. Mm. We got pizza. Oh, we got the coast. Oh, we got the black. So we got the black socks. We got the white socks. What else do you want? The black socks, Ramses, is the baseball scandal that happened in 1919, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Supposedly, the white socks uh, through the through the 1919 World Series. Damn! The reference, Ramses. Okay, so uh, going out before we go way beyond tangent, I think we've done like we've done that Superman loop. Uh, that's basically all the EA news, except for one that Miguel brought up that I totally was shocked about. Did you know there's gonna be a new Madden game this year? Yeah, I know. New right? Madden this year? Not 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 they're not just re-releasing 2015 again. New Madden. Yep, brand new Madden 2016. This time. You have the same number of football teams, but you have all the. T this time, you have all new players joining from this year's 2015 draft. Wow, amazing! Yeah. I, it's, it's it's almost it's 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 almost like it's like you have to change the game every year. I know. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Tell me more. I know, right? <laughs> uh, shall we continue with company news? Uh, Capcom said they're going to work on a game that me and a few people have lovingly nicknamed Becky's Big Adventure. 
It is Resident Evil Zero. Yes, we're getting Resident Evil Zero HD. It'll be hitting consoles probably later this year. No. If they're smart, they would try to get it in October. No, they're not. They have already officially announced it's coming out early 2016. Or the way till 2016, that works too. They're waiting till they're gonna do it early 2016. This is how we got like how we got Resident Evil HD. It was Evil One HD earlier this year. Okay. And that's because they need to clean up some assets that just didn't <laughs> transfer right. Yeah, if you see the HD transfer that they did, it's like wow, it's like night and day what they did because you see the assets that they that they blew up for HD. They're like yikes. We need we need to fix this when they did Resident Evil One HD. So it's like they they had to do it from the ground. They had to do a lot a lot of the assets from the ground up. Pretty sure they had to clean up the the the, 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 the models. They had to clean up all of the, the actual character models, the actual model of the house, because everything was actually instead of being pre rendered, everything was rendered in real time. Remember that. Mm. Well, here's the thing: is even between Re Resident Evil Remake and uh, Resident Evil Zero, you could tell a graphical difference just between those two. Actually, believe it or not, I think the remake gonna... is a lot cleaner than uh, Zero was. Oh, I'll tell you this much right now. Um, it's it's been said that Resident Evil Zero is actually more of a down is a downgrade from Resident Evil One Remake. I know. I I owned both games and I played through uh, Resident Evil because I that was the first one of the two I got. And I was like, man, and I grabbed Zero. I'm like, oh, I can't wait for. Oh God, this game looks like ass. Yeah, because there is like remember this game was so supposed this game was supposed to be for the N64. Oh, that explains that. Okay. So I'm Thank pretty you. sure they're gonna have they're gonna have more work to work with now because it's like oh shit we didn't know it looked like that much ass. Yeah, because I remember just on the GameCube it looked terrible. I was like this game looks terrible, fun, and I, I arguably I like it a little bit more than Resident Evil One um, because I actually kind of liked those leech monster things and I liked fighting the little prototype tyrant and I liked the little I can't call it co-op but having the two characters simultaneously working together was actually really interesting, except for, again, your AI spent most of its time shooting you in the back of the head than actually being useful. But, oh, you know... Like Resident Evil 4, where it was Ashley, where she was completely useless? Yeah, but, I mean, that was an escort mission, so that's a little bit different. You're not escorting your teammate around. Your teammate's supposed to be functionally useful, but just isn't. Um, to the point that what I ended up doing is just giving them a gun with one clip, so if they just ran out of that one clip, they wouldn't waste the rest of my ammo. I was like, I can't give you the rest of the ammo because you're just going to waste it all. And then other times, I wouldn't even give them a gun. I just let them carry ammo and the, and a knife. <laughs> and they're just defending themselves with a knife. Like, I can't trust you with a weapon because you're just going to waste ammo. Well, this like is survival Resident horror. Evil. Damn it, Sheva, stop wasting my freaking ammo. Sorry, I was referencing another Resident Evil game that pissed me off. Resident Continuing with Capcom news, though. They have announced that rather than make a new Mega Man game, you know, something that'd make people happy, they're and instead of course, going. And of course, Jared, just to say the successful Kickstarter for Mighty Number no. Nine that showed that people want to have a new Mega Man game. Yep. Capcom just don't care. Go on. That's the general rule. Capcom doesn't care. They are making a new Mega Man cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Got a baby scream and a cool little rock chord. Yes, 30th anniversary of Mega Man will be celebrated with a new animated series in 2017. It'll be 26 episodes. It is a co-production between Man of Action, who gave us stuff like Ben 10, and Densu, that gave us probably Japanese stuff that I don't... So, yay, now I have your power. Yay. I, I want to get excited about this. I want to... like. Mega Man's one of those things that has so much potential for going bad. Like the really crappy Battle Network cartoon was just, ugh. Like, you could have made such an awesome Battle Network cartoon, and then instead they made it so, like, hokey and terrible. Well, that, 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 was supposed to be for Jap that was supposed to be for Japanese kids, man. I know it was, but that doesn't mean... Like, there's plenty of series that were for Japanese kids that are still enjoyable by adults. You and I both enjoy... Here. Six, like good series. You can still make a series enjoyable for the whole family and kids of all ages. You don't just have to make it like super hokey and stupid. Yeah. I'm gonna say this right now. I actually like the Battle Network cartoon, so shut up. <sighs> so I guess you like Star Force as well, right, Ramses? 
I haven't seen Star Force yet. I've been that's been what that's been on my uh, to do list. You have. I didn't even know Star they made a Star Force cartoon. Come on. I didn't even know they made one. Yeah, they made a Star no. Force. Yeah. Star Force and yeah, but yeah, I, think, I, I, I think, mean uh, to watch it. I think Jared Kyle and Bear voices the um the main protagonist like thingy that consumes him and lets him become the Mega Man or whatever. Oh man, you can wave in. Yep. Whatever the term is in that one. Not yeah. wave in. Jacking. Jacking in in the first one, which is hilarious. Yeah. But then they have a different term in uh, in uh, Star Force. I should remember what it is. I don't remember either, but... I, I only played a little bit of one of the Star Force games because someone else had it. I was like, oh, I'll give it a try. Uh, like I said, like I was saying earlier, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cautious about this series because... Man of Action is is doing it, and Man of Action is hit or miss with me. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's done, I like Ben Ten. I'm gonna admit this right now. I put me on record. I actually like Ben. A 10. A lot of people, a lot of people like Ben Ten. I have a lot of friends who actually really like Ben Ten. I've seen a couple episodes. I have no problem with the series. So on that regard, I like the series. Now, the stuff he's been making recently, the stuff like Avengers Assemble, Ultimate Spider-Man, Eight, uh, Hulk and Agents of Smash. Mm-hmm. I, I actually like that's Ultimate Spider-Man's cartoon. Also, that's the new head of animation for Marvel and stuff. Yeah. That's that's why we got we lost um what was it Earth's Mightiest Avengers. And that's why we lost Spectacular Spider-Man, yeah, which so, was probably pretty good yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That's not oh, I love Spectacular. I I own Spectacular. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got Miguel. I got it for DVD on DVD from Miguel. Yeah, I I have my. my uh, I'm hardcore like that. But um, yeah. But like I said, like uh, like he's hit or miss, it, and I'm like, I just want to see if it's like Ben Ten, may, um, Ben of Action, or it's like later Ben of Action. So it's like, let's see what it's happens. Also, if it's a co-production of a Japanese company, that also co-productions always worry me. That's even more worrisome. I can't think point. of any like, because here's the thing: there's a lot of French and Japanese co-productions, and most of those results are not great. There are some really good ones though. Wakfu and Remember. Obon Star Racers are really good. Yep. Yeah. So oh, let's say Discord's Avengers. And not, uh, oh, I do love Discord's so. Avengers. Yeah. So yeah, like, we could we could actually go through this. This this honestly could have been a topic in and of itself. Um, yep. And I didn't think it would go that direction. I thought it was just me us making fun of you know the potential. But you know if they're at least planning it out as a twenty six, maybe they can think this through. I mean. There's the Archie comic uh, Mega Man series, which is supposed to be pretty good. I've never yeah. actually read it. I hear it's supposed to be really good, and I think there's a lot you could do with that universe. You just got to make it, you know, not hokey. If you, if they, you know, what, if they basically do it, if they do it like Astro Boy but on steroids, I'd be in. Still, it's it's so it's so it's still missing the most key ingredient ever. Um, which is. Can you <laughs> It's missing. <laughs> like, Miguel and I both go like to KG and Fume, and you just do the the, the little riff. <laughs> like, okay, you got us. You got us. Okay. On that note, literally, we'll move on to the next story. Um, it is Final okay. Fantasy 15 news. Yay! By the pretty way, boys riding around in a pretty car. Am I the only one who feels that Final Fantasy is the only JRPG that is designed for non-JRPG fans? Yes. <laughs> Actually, no, believe it, anyone who's right a there. JRPG fan never puts Final Fantasy in their list of, like, best. They're like, oh, man, it's all about Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, Artanelico, Atelier Iris, the Tales of series. Don't forget um, the earlier... Switch some thing. of the earlier Final Fantasies are on my list, but like I said, those are the early Final Fantasies. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting, if you meet people who are really hardcore JRPGers, they're like, any Final Fantasy, basically, 8 and on, we, we could do it without. <laughs> and then I'm like, don't yeah. Don't 9. I like 9. I know. But 9 is the, pl- the little black sheep, because most people forgot what the plot of 9 was, but it has really interesting character designs, a cool world, and it just gets and- overshadowed by the insane amount of non-JRPG fans that love 8. And the insane amount of non-JRPG fans who love ten. Well, it's like. But if you're if you're a JRPGer, nine is a great, great yeah, selection. Right. Is, you had seven and eight, and then nine was a throwback to the more medieval, you know, 
themes in the older games. Shoot. Yeah. So way back, a lot of people used to trash on Nine, but now a lot of people have a nostalgia for it. Yes. Actually, and, and you're right. I, I was unfair on Nine. I apologize. I was just saying, yeah, I, it's sandwich between eight and ten. <laughs> yeah, and I still, and I'm still waiting for them to put a Nine character into Record Keepers. They oh, will at some a, point. Well, they yeah, they put in Vanille. Ugh, oh, thirteen. Like literally, the first thirteen character you get is Vanille. Not not even Lightning. Not even Lightning's the popular Vanille. one. And right now the um. The Wait, what's the Afro guy? Who's the Afro guy? The event in the Let game right now is the Afro get guy. Locked. I'll play as the Afro guy, but I'm not playing as anyone else. Um, anyhow, before we get off on a huge tangent about uh, Final Fantasy games and why we hate the later ones, uh, I think that's kind of documented by almost everyone on the internet at this point. Um, there's a few notes here. I'm going to get to the funniest last, so we'll go with the other things first. Uh, for those who don't know, Final Fantasy 15 was recycled from Final Fantasy Versus 13. So, Versus 13 that was announced like in 2007 or 8 or 9, something yeah, like that. Yeah, 2007. It was around the same time we saw the PlayStation 3. Yeah. It was introduced way early on, and we never heard anything about this game. It's a seven-year journey. Kids are now, kids are now, in, uh, now in just going into like third grade. Wars have maybe just started and maybe have just ended at, in that same period of time. Yes, this game has been floating around in the ether for way too long. And they basically decided, hey, we'll just turn this into Final Fantasy XV after we change some story elements and also change a character. So Stella, who was going to be the original lead, has been removed. She's and been replaced with Luna and some dude whose name I didn't write down because I don't care enough as co-leads. And the problem is the last game that had like a co-lead concept, as far as I know, was, well, Final Fantasy XIII, uh, which is terrible. Um, and actually, no, that's enough of an argument. I was going to go all the way back to 12 with Van kind of being semi-co-lead to Ash, but no, no, no. Let's, let's stick with 13 here. Freaking Lightning and Cloud. A, a possibly mentally handicapped man running around in a trench coat punching robots, trying to save his girlfriend in a really stupid way, and a chick who's part of some vague rebellion fighting against a vague enemy that's vague because, God forbid, we write a storyline for Final Fantasy XIII. Holy crap, don't do the double protagonist bullcrap. It never works, it never feels good, and it never feels satisfying at the end. God. I'm, th I'm just going to put my copy of MGS2 away, so... Um... But that's not a double protagonist. It, your prologue has one protagonist, and the rest of the game has its own protagonist. That's different. I'm, I'm fine for your prologue featuring a different lead character, because it's, it's a prologue, and it's supposed to lead into the main story. You can do that. I'm fine with that. I played... I played several JRPGs where you play as one of the villain characters in the prologue. Freaking a Breath of Fire 4, you play as the Emperor in the beginning. And then you jump over to Ryu, or whatever you want to name your main character, but default for most Breath of Fire games is Ryu. So I've, I've had that before with other games like that. Freaking a Tales of uh, Fantasia, you play as the legendary heroes fighting against Dahos in... Um, shoot, I didn't know I could come up with a third, but who cares? The point is, I'm fine with that. That's fine. That's not a dual protagonist. Dual protagonist is, hey, you're going to do two hours as this character. Now you're going to jump to do two hours as this character to jump back to the first character to jump to the second oh, character. I, I, that, know another, I know another. I know another bad example. I know another bad. I know another bad example that I can get you on. Hmm. GTA Five. Oh yeah, but I thought you did. I've never played Five. First off, how often do you jump between characters in Five? You can switch them on the fly. See, that's fine. I'm fine if on the fly. That, you know, it's like we were talking about Resident Evil Zero, where you have Rebecca and you have uh, Billy. Billy, thank you. And you're, you're using them both on the fly. Now, there's certain parts where one character or the other is trapped somewhere, and you're using only one character. But for the most part, it's on the fly switching between them. I'm yeah. fine with that. That's not, They're not going to do that with this. You know this is going to be Final Fantasy XIII, where they all divide off into two different groups, both with usually counter objectives because god forbid we ever have a united team doing united stuff that's where it pisses me off and i don't like the jumping back and forth every i did a boss fight now i'm using this other team now i did a boss fight now i'm doing this other i hate that you know we you, you know it'll be the, the icing in the cake just just to mm. piss you, just to piss you what everybody else off okay so we already seen how final fantasy 13 works with the pretty boys in the car 
It's like it, it's yeah. Monster Hunter Light. Imagine if you will. Also, follow me on this one. Hold on, hold on. So, imagine if you will that the other character plays like traditional Final Fantasy. Hmm. Turn based. Ding, yes. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Okay, that would be amazing if one character actually had one completely pl one playstyle and the other had a completely different playstyle. Yeah. That would be amazing, and then I, I would give forgiveness points for that because that's kind of ballsy to do, and I I dig I would dig that. Because the thing um, is, I, I think I think that would be a good idea because well, well uh, that's just me saying this, but I don't know. You'd have I to put them in situations that would warrant those different types of playstyles. Like, oh, this one character is on this magical world where they actually have to like travel long distances and stuff, and then the other character is like trapped inside some sort of tower or something where you could have these, you know, like you said, Monster Hunter light style battles. Well, ba basically, he, basically, basically, from the demo for what I can gather is basically you just you just loitering around, just like like pretty much Yellowstone Park, fighting monsters in the Yellowstone Park. Yeah. So it's like, uh, yeah, you're not gonna get the one. You know, yeah, it's, it doesn't sound like a great demo, but neither was the Final Fantasy thir uh, 12 demo either. But that warned me that, by the way, the battle system of this is going to suck ass. Spoiler, it totally does. Um, <clears throat> keep going. Hell, Final Fantasy 13's battle system also kind of sucks ass. All right, but keep also, going. At least that's some depth. Yes, something. I know. The final part of the Final Fantasy thing is, according to the creator of the game, it will have a quote... Complete, coherent story in one game. Um, should that be like every game? The, the, it should be, except for the Final Fantasy thirteen trilogy and Final Fantasy X and X-2. And, and seven. Seven, and it's all, it's infinite amounts of spin-offs. Four. Oh yeah, four, well, four of the After Years was so much later, though. Yeah. I, I, I'll forgive four of After Years. So uh, there's stuff like that where you're like, are you saying there's going to be no spin-offs or, or or coherence first? Can we can we focus on that square? I, I like the idea of a coherent story. Um, you haven't done that in a while, and it would be nice. Yeah. Also, so. if you don't mind me uh, saying, you know, there was a new, there was the Tales Festival, right? And the new Tales game has been announced. Mm-hmm. Tales of Berseria. Bers Tales of Berseria, PS4, PS3. Yeah. They're having a, the Mutsumi Inomata is returning to do the franchise character develop to do the character development for the the character designs, and more importantly, they said that they have announced that there's going to be a female lead, and only that one character is the f only hero of the thing. Which is nice. Um, and most have male as either the secondary lead, or in the case of uh, Zillia, a very complicated to routes and thing. But at least makes Plus Gaming more fun. Yeah, and the main character's name is going to be called Velvet. Uh, well, they've done that before, though, because, like, if you go to Tales of Hearts, I think it's Tales of Hearts, like, all the characters have gemstone names. So it's like going through Season 1 of Sailor Moon. <laughs> so it's like, you have Beryl and Opal and uh, Emerald and Garnet and stuff like that, and I'm like, oh, it's just going through what Sailor Moon. What am I watching? What am I watching? I'm watching Steven Universe. What? Yeah, I know. That's the other one you could go with. It's, it's, yes, Tales of Hearts is the Steven Universe of the Tales of French. <laughs> Great! Yes! Anyways. <laughs> so, anyways. Anyways, yeah. Hearts, Hearts. 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 Good game. But yes, that wraps up all my news, except for one thing which leads into Miguel's news, which is that on Humble Bundle right now, they have what they're calling the Nindy Bundle, which is a... A nice set of 11 indie games for the Wii U and 3DS. And I picked it up. Some, some interesting little choices in there. I'm kind of 50 50 on it because I don't have a Wii U. And there's only about two or three of the uh, 3DS games I'm actually kind of wanting to play. And I realized I could buy them for cheaper than if I did the full set. So. All right. Well, oh, if you want to know what, game, what uh, 3DS games I'm interested in, uh, SteamWorld Dig. Um, Mighty Switch Force and Gunman Clive because, oh my god, it's, it's basically Mega Man but Old West. It's really good. I can vouch for that one. And then kind of have a little bit of curiosity in Moon Chronicle or whatever, but episodic games do not like invoke a, oh my gosh, they invoke a, oh, an episodic game. Well, I will say this. Maybe I think I made Mutant Buds. 
Huh. That was like it, like before making mutant muds, he made moon. So yeah, the more you learn. Because because I don't care about Woe Dave and <laughs> everything me. else is uh, Wii U, which I don't have. So oh, and I don't care about uh, Ali Ali at all. Like that. that if I, if I pick up the set, Ali Ali immediately goes onto the let's give this away to someone because I could care less about playing a side scrolling skateboard game. Mm. Which means I do care a little. <laughs> yes, folks, it's couldn't care less. <laughs> it means there's no extra room for me to care. Um, but no, I, I do a little. It looks interesting. It's just, it'd be more interesting if it was on someone else's DS and I played it two rounds of it versus owning it myself. I. Huh? Anyways. I was gonna say I did pick up the I did pick up the the one the one dollar tier of the um the bundle and the all the games are actually pretty good. The only one I still don't understand just is, the price alone for Guacamelee is you know awesome. A dollar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you pick it up, Miguel? Nope, not yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought you had Guacamelee, Miguel. No. We have I think oh. Ramsey's gave it to me, but I haven't gotten the chance to download it, and I think I lost the link. I'll send it back to you. But yeah, goddamn humble bundle. They're yeah, I, I kind of want to see more stuff like this. I'd love to see a PlayStation version of this, especially if it featured like classics, because I love PlayStation classics. Um, or or even see like a Square version of this, because they've done other Square bundles and have it for the console systems and stuff like that. That'd be kind of fun. Well, um, what's it called? They did, they did, they did do a humble bundle with, with um, well, Square Enix. But what they did is they had games like like Hitman and stuff like that. So no Final Fantasy, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. Well, doesn't matter. I don't really want to play the old school Final Fantasies, anyways. Or yeah. even you know, give me a Capcom Mega Man like downloadable bundle. That would be amazing. I'll download a bunch of Mega Man onto my uh, DS, even though probably the classic franchise. There's probably only one or two games I'd actually like to have. Because yeah, I don't know which ones I'd actually come back to play. I'd, I'd like to see more of this console types. It'd be kind of cool. And I, this is their first real foray into that. So we'll see how this goes and how popular this gets and if they can do it again. Hey, hey, I'm well, back and forth as to whether or not I want to jump well, in. But we'll. that's more of a you and me and we all discuss it post-show kind of thing. Well, Ramses, can you go on the Humble Bundle and see how many have been sold already? Uh, HumbleBundle.com. Let's see. I'm pretty sure it's in a uh, seventy-five thousand. That's fairly popular. Let's see what the. But I know a lot of other things getting like the hundreds of thousands. Of certain well, ones. if it makes you, if it makes you feel any better, it's doing better than the current hum humble bundle. Oh, okay. Which is not that good, but the problem is I don't have any of the numbers of the actual like other bundles on me. Well, it's because, like, okay, for example... Scroll, I think you can scroll down to the bottom and see how much money it's made. Which may also give us an indication of its success. Um, and while you do that, Miguel can prepare the uh, Nintendo Direct discussion that he wanted to kind of get into. Uh, six, six million, ninety, sixty, sixty-nine million, seven, uh, it's around, it's around seven, seven million. All right. Nice. So that's not too bad. Means we could see more of these. Um, I'm back and forth on it. We'll, like I said, that's a post-show kind of discussion because having a bunch of Wii U downloads is great, except for you know they serve no purpose to me. But having Guacamelee as a giveaway prize wouldn't it be too bad if I did the one dollar tier. Um, well, uh, we'll we'll see about that. You know, just you wait. Mhm. Mm hint, hint. Yeah. Um, Plus, I could give away Woe Dave. To anyone who wants that, and literally, I'll just give it away for free. Just text, just send me a text or something. Somebody who wants Bo Dave. Uh, score chasers are not my game, so. Mm -hmm. so. So, anyways, going on June first, we had uh, Nintendo Direct that came out. That no one knew. That, oh, I'm pretty sure some people knew about it because I saw it. Was it a secret to everyone, Miguel? I guess it was a secret to everyone. Ho oh. ho ho! See what I did there, folks. And winners don't do drugs. And the show's over. I'm going to go take a pee. Okay. <laughs> show's not over yet. It is not. Let's talk some uh, Nintendo Direct, Miguel. So Nintendo Direct, uh, on June 1st, there was a, it's called a mini Direct because it wasn't a long one emphasizing what's going to happen, what's going on. Pretty much. It's, it's E3, little, basically. 
it was little things that was announced. For one, little thing is that Chibi Robo is coming to the Nintendo 3DS. Yay. Yeah. So it's coming to so it's coming to US. Yep, Chibi Robo. Oh. I, I I forget the subtitle name. But will it come with Will it come with its Will it come with Amiibo? Yes, it will be releasing. Scalpers, the get your get your shit together because that, that's gonna be your next that's gonna be your next target. So target uh, hashtag target Chibi Robo. So I'm not Chibi really Robo, familiar Chibi with the Chibi, Chibi Robo, Robo franchise. Like, what style of game are those? Mm, sort of puzzle, sort of, um, sort of like just puzzle. That's that's a puzzle game because you basically have to like do like manual manual labor stuff, and you have to use like you know plugs and stuff like that to make sure that everything's ready. I think this one is not going to be like a like a um like a platformer type of game. All right. So yeah, we have Keep going. And after that, uh, they announced um, they announced that there's going to be a new Dr. Mario for the 3DS called Dr. Mario Miracle Cure. I'm curious. Let's see what what they can do to change up the game in the style. I'm done with it, anyways. What's, what else is new? After that, they announced the new Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. That's a downloadable title, right? Yeah, I believe so, yes. Okay. I have never played any of the Mystery Dungeon games. <laughs> I, I know nothing about that franchise. I, I, I knew some people who played them and enjoyed them. I just never did. Mm, what else? What else? We are looking at... Super Mario and Sonic at the 2016 Rio Games is coming out as well. Yay! Yep, that sounds about right. So it's about that time. Mm -hmm. I think it, I really do feel that like Nintendo should just figure out how, or pay, pay Sega whatever they want and just take Sonic as their own character and actually do Sonic right. Outside of just like putting him as, as you know, a, a Smash character or a uh, Olympic game character. Basically, stop making him a crossover character and an actual character in the Nintendo franchise. Yeah, make it make him a full Nintendo franchise character, which will make any child of the '90s head explode. Just yeah, have no the kid, right? Sonic thing for so long to then have them just like be owned by the same company would just you know, it would shatter reality, but would be an amazing reality shatter. It would. Uh, not only that, they announced a couple of other games as well. Uh, Art Academy Home Studio, which isn't a game, it's pretty much an art game simulator. Would you create your own yeah. art? Uh, not only that, they're releasing Little Battler Experience on August 21st, which I'm somewhat excited for because it has little customization and customizable robots. Which is based on an anime that's out as well. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, that's Dan Ball Sinki in the United States. Yep. And it, it gives me, that, that, game, that game reminds me a lot of Custom Robo. I loved Custom Robo on the DS when it came out, and I was kind of disheartened when there was no other announcement for Custom Robo. Uh huh. So is this basically like a Metabots kind of thing? Like you just. Build your robot, and you have to go up against other people's robots. Yeah, pretty much. I think. I'm cool with that. I generally like little customizable battle games like that. Heck, I'm a fan of um, Armored Core, like we were talking about last night on the stream. I talked a little bit about Armored Core, and I was like, "Yeah, it loves me some customizable destruction." And there's a couple other little things, right? Yep. Puzzles and Dragons for the Mario Brothers and regular, they're gonna have um, they have on on this content, not DLC, none of that stuff. Actually, when you beat the worlds 100% and everything, I believe that's how you gotta do it. You unlock eight new worlds for the Mario and Mar uh, the Mario Brothers edition of the Puzzles and Dragons. Mm -hmm. And for the regular Puzzles and Dragons. They have weekly distributions of monster of characters. That's kind of cool. As well, 
And not only that, guess... big news for the people that loved uh, Bravely Default, Bravely Second will be coming out in 2016. Yeah! Yay. Sweet! Works for me. I mean, for yes. ever finished the original game, you can now just jump into part two. A lot more job, a lot more weird ass jobs. <laughs> yeah. With with cool graphics and a mm, hopefully a better quest system. Hopefully. Yeah. So is that it? No. Not only that, mm. all the E3 news that they're gonna be releasing for E3 is gonna be only focused on their 2015 and 2016 Nintendo games. So no discussion of the NX. No NX discussion, none of that. I'm fine with that. Which makes again, I, 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 is it just me or, or I, this might lead to a discussion? But is it just me? Are they gonna announce a new a new Mario game? Like that's like the grand final, just like in the Wizard. It's, it's called, like here's a new Mario game. It's, oh! called, it's called Mario Maker, Ramses. Well, yeah, Mario Maker, Mario. I'm saying an all new, like never before seen game. You're, you're talking about like Super Mario 3D World 2? Yeah, something like that. I would uh, actually... it's, it's possible, but it doesn't sound like that's their focus this year. At least that's what I'm gathering. Yeah. Or if they are, they're being really tight-lipped about it, not letting anything slip out. Yeah. But like I said, <laughs> uh, that, that's, just, that's just me theorizing. I'd like but... to see them bring out some more of their flagship titles, honestly. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to see another Star Fox or another Metroid. But they are or something. another Star Fox, Jared. Is it Star Trek Fox Adventures 2? No. Yes. More action? No. Then I have no interest. Star Fox game. Dinosaur Planet is the only Star Fox game I've ever played, so that's what I've based my entire Star Fox experience on. Or I got Star Fox 1 for the Super Nintendo on my birthday, and it was one of my favorite games ever. <laughs> Star Fox 64? Man, I'm losing Jared. Which is improper, but whatever. We're actually losing you, actually. We're losing everyone, I'm sorry. Okay, so that was pretty much all the stuff that was on the E3 Direct. Not, not too big. Oh, wait, there's a few other things. There's DLC stuff that was announced. Yep, Lucas. Yay, we Lucas. have yet another psychic character who plays kind of like all the other psychic characters. Yep, Lucas will be coming on June 14th. You Mother 3 fans. Yep, yep, yep. Uh huh. Uh, uh what else? Splatoon. Squid News. Splatoon, is, Splatoon. Uh, is getting DLC as well. It's already been out for a while, but people that bought Splatoon can get a free. NES Zapper gun. Which I've actually heard some pretty good things about. Like, in-game in is actually pretty good. And not only that, there's a new map that you can get. Not map you can get, but it's gonna be random. It's gonna be, like, thrown into, into rotation. Because I don't know if you know how the game works. And it's someone turned down a goddamn fucking car mic, the uh, card stereo, for God's sake. We, know, we all know you got the bass going. can go for the recording, so... No one else is hearing it except for you, Ramses. Anyways, it looks like that. Anyways, um, and how it works basically uh, that that every I think six hours they, they rotate maps. So that's gonna be in the rotation. That's kind of weird that you can't choose what map you want to play on. Nope. And it's always it's, it's always randomized as to which one you're gonna be at. Well, they do inform you. They do inform you when you when you turn on the game, or if you're there on this on when they do change it, they'll inform you what maps are in the rotation. It's always gonna be a set of two. That's Anyways. different. Anyways, what what else was there DLC wise? And not only that, I think sometime later on they're gonna have the Squid Girl costume pack. Yes, that is official by the creator of Squid Girl. He he did it confirm that there is gonna be Squid Girl DLC coming in August. So expect everyone to look. So expect everyone to have blue hair and like that weird little thing on her head. All the female characters, anyways. Well, let's get Fnatic and make it male. 
Nope, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. I'm back. pretty sure they're gonna have a male, something equivalent of that for the male, for the male. They'll, they'll, they'll probably have a, you know, knowing it's Nintendo, they'll probably have a more robust costume pack in general. Yeah. That will feature the Squid Girl stuff, but probably have other things too. Because if you saw the way they did um, uh, Mario Kart 64, or Mario Kart 64, uh, Mario Kart 8, uh, um, you know, they've they've really taken, they they put effort into their DLC packs. Versus like the Smash Brothers, let's give you a character every like four months. So, not even that four is... months. That's like that. That was like the last one we had was like two months ago. Yeah, well, whatever. And the but yeah, d- download happened like a few days ago. Hmm. All right. So is that it? That's all the Nintendo news I got off of that. What else? What other news do you have? That's it. All right. So you want me to go on to my my part of the news? Sure, why not? Yeah, we can. All going. right. So we're getting a new Guilty Gear um, excerpt revision coming soon for the arcades and possibly for the consoles. Who knows? Maybe these characters might be on DLC. But the new console, with the new arcade version, we call Guilty Gear Excerpt Rev- Revelator. In, well, in this new arc systems, they're probably going to go the route of, hey, here's a new disc for you to buy. Instead of doing the yeah, Capcom that's route, what they did, too. instead but, of doing uh, the Capcom route where it's like, hey, you know how you bought the game? Well, pay an extra fifteen bucks and you can have the new version already downloaded for your thing when you have your disc loaded up. Yeah, that was kind of nice that they did that. But also, if they did things the way Capcom did it, all the DLC would already be preloaded on the disc. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the big things is. In this new revision for the arcade Revelator, is that all of, all the characters from the console version they're, they're exclusive, which I think it's um Ramathal, um, uh, what's the name of that one? Uh, um, Ramathal, uh, Lysel, um, Sin, and Leopold are all, all going to be playable in this in the arcade version. And, and added into this new version will be Johnny, and a new character named Jacko. Jacko Lacko? Jacko Wacko. She is literally, she is literally kind of insane because, like, her moveset, I've seen her moveset and you can find it online. Her moveset is she can summon, like, little minions to attack you. Mm. Which is kind of cool. And that, that's one thing I'll say for Arc Systems is they have this process of coming up with new character archetypes you didn't realize could exist. Fucking Batman! And hopefully Jacko plays a lot easier and a lot smoother than either of the doll users from uh, Blaze Blue, because the doll users from Blaze Blue are just impossible for me to control. Well, I think they're. I think they go in an automatic thing. I, I thought at first. I thought at first Jacko was gonna be like a. Was what's up? Okay. So I thought. I thought at first Jacko was gonna be like a um, a, a, a rigid clone. But she's surprising me in the fact that it's like, hey, she can summon these like little people to do do attacks. What the hell? The only reason why you thought she was gonna be a Jack uh, Bridget clone is because it was a trap. Well, no, it's just not just that. But the way if you see how she looks and you see like the first couple of like gameplay footage, you th- you thought she was a type of character that would like set traps all over the place. But no, she's a kind of character that summons like things to like do her bidding, and it's like, wow, that's um interesting. And the last bit of the news that we're going to go with is that Dragon Quest Heroes is coming exclusive to the PS4 here in the United States. And it's getting a snazzy special edition with, um, let's see, it's coming with the game. It comes in a, it comes in a, in a treasure chest. It comes with a, it comes with a slime um, plushie, it comes with a slime keychain, a uh, lanyard, and, and slime weapons for your character in-game. Yeah, I like the little treasure chest kind of design for that. I think that's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. That's what I like now I just need to wait for them to to officially announce that Dragon Quest Eight 3D will be coming to the U.S. And I will be a happy boy. Dragon Quest Seven and Eight. Jesus Christ! Didn't expect that one either. But let's let's see yeah. what happens. All right, is that all? Is there anything that, else is, that is all the news, which is a surprisingly large amount considering how close we are to E3. I mean, since we're not going to do the whole, like, you know, uh, rumor game, because I refuse to bite into the rumor stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, other piece of Final Fantasy XV news I forgot to mention. 
They're not going to release a trailer for E3. It'll be at Gamescom. Uh, uh, a couple other yeah. things I want to talk about is video game movies. You know how we had video game movie talk a while back, Jared? We do. We have it every once in a while, yeah, because there's always something new coming, um, including Watchtower getting slightly larger release right now. So if you Dead Rising fans who want to see um, the insanity that is Watchtower, it'll, uh, it's getting a wider release very soon. And wider release, I mean, still digital distribution, but I mean, more than just Crackle or whatever it was on. Yep. So, now I have a chance to say that, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the Assassin's Creed movie now has official promo poster. Yep. It's just an eagle and that says, I forget what it says, because it's not that big of a deal to me. Because, yeah. Ramses, can you look at that up? What the poster says? Because well, it's, it's yeah. one of those things I didn't think was really news because it's like a poster. I'm like, yay! Well, it's it just it, it, it's just um it's just like information that tells like because like this must have been at a trade convention. Yeah, probably. So it's like it just says they're fine. It's a booth P one fifty five. Places to increase about please contact consumer products NSAC at Ubisoft.com. Under that, it should just say all things are possible. That would just, just would have been amazing, but whatever. All things are possible. All things are possible. Nothing is forbidden. All things are possible. Yes. Assassin's uh, Creed the movie in theaters, 12, 21, 16. Yep. With a big fucking eagle. What the yep. fuck does this eagle have to do with anything? Because, you know. Eagle vision. Eagle vision. Oh, okay. And then the, Still. The, the, the leap of faith. He always has like a little eagle like hovering ah. around it. Yeah, well, um... But yeah, I didn't think it was a big enough news. It's kind of like when people were flipping out when they're like, oh my god, a Batman v Superman poster, and it's just the Batman and Superman logos. Oh my god. And then people are flipping out about that. I'm like, guys, it's a poster. Shut up. And it's kind of this where I'm like, I can't get hugely excited over, like, an Eagle poster. And like, that's Eagle what, poster. And after like, that mo other movie news, um, yeah. the Angry Birds movie is coming out May 2016. Oh man, I wish I could care. I know, right? Like, last I cannot. Ah! Uh, franchise I've never, never played, um, and I don't know how much story you can tell. I mean, heck, they don't have like a cartoon series or something like that. I think they yeah, have that's available. Series. That's available on in the. That's Was available. It a web series or something. They did make a little. They did make like a cartoon series based off. I think the female one. Yeah. Well, no, that's um they, that the 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 what they have like a little web series available for those who have the app. The fuck they have Peter Dinklage? Is he really that strapped for money? Yeah, he's going it for funsies. That's like, is Peter Dinklage really that strapped for money? I mean, I'm pretty sure he's rolling in that Game of Thrones Skrilla. Or, or more importantly, that Destiny Skrilla. Oh, the, uh -huh. the Destiny Cheddar. Yeah, Destiny Cheddar. Let's see. I think Danny Peter Dinklage is at the point now where he just wants to do things that are different than playing, like, Tyrion. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what he's doing. I mean, it's why he probably took the role for Destiny. I think it's why he did X Men, and it's probably why he's in Angry Birds. <laughs> it's like an X Men. It's like the picture of him with a prosthetic leg, just looking up. <laughs> anyway, keep going. Hey, he's a great ghost companion for the first Good few point. parts of the game. I like how the fact that he almost sounds bored. It almost just sounds like everything he's saying is sarcastic, and I'm like. I've heard that that wasn't intentional, that he just did placeholder uh, lines for them because they weren't quite sure what they were going to have for the final version of it. So some of the some of the lines that make him sound just like, oh, here you are, but it's time to test your accuracy, was like not the proper line. Like they were going to redo other lines. So half his lines are lines he did for like the realsies, but then they used some of the placeholder stuff. And he's like, no, don't use the placeholder stuff. I wasn't acting. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 so, the always infamous line of like, those... <laughs> Those wizards came from the moon. So I find that amusing because it's just the way it comes off. Because I, I was watching my friend play, some of the lines just make him sound like bored, and it kind of just makes it sound like this. Start, the computer's just being sarcastic. But I don't know why I'm doing this, but I might. But yeah. Uh, uh, anyways, yeah, I'm looking through the cast list. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie Sukis, not Eddie Circus. Josh Gad, Danny McRiddle, Bill Hader. Maya Randolph, Peter Dinklage, um, <laughs> he <turned, laughs> Immortan Joe is in this movie for some odd reason. 
Keegan Michael Keys. Uh, let's see. Uh, just a bunch of other people, like just people from like shows I don't watch anymore. Yeah, really looks like a, a fairly robust voice cast. And I don't know what kind of story. The game, as far as I understand it, doesn't really have a storyline. You're just birds throwing eggs at a. Uh, no, they they they're, they stole the pig stole the the pig stole the pig stole the eggs from the birds, and now the birds have to launch themselves at the at the pig to get their eggs back. Oh, they're kamikaze. Oh, that's. It makes this really dark. But okay, they're trying to rescue the kids. And then they have all the spin-offs. They have, like, one. they have like a Star Wars one and stuff like that, which I have skin jobs and not really anything else. By the way, I still, I still say uh, I still say I believe Transformers is the greatest thing ever. They have a comic of that too, don't they? Yes. But if you ever see the trailer for it, you're like your mind your brain will explode. There's a trailer for it out already? Well, it's been out for a while, but let me see if I can pull it up. But for, for, for its Transformers, yeah, because the game's been out for a while too. Yeah, they got the guy who composed the original the, the original movie to do the the, the, the music for the trailer. Oh, and it well, looks like an episode. It looks like a Transformer episode as well. <laughs> it's, it's the craziest thing. It's like you you can't believe that they actually made this. Well, I mean, they're obviously taking their time and doing work. I'm sure the Angry Birds Star Wars is probably a lot of fun, too. It's just a franchise of games I've never really played. I know they had them on sale recently, so I probably could have just grabbed one for, like, two bucks or something, but I just didn't, and it doesn't really matter that much to me, because it's essentially... It, I assume this is kind of like a tower defense kind of thing, and that's yeah. what's always seen to me, and I'm just meh when it comes to tower defense. Well, not tower defense. It's more like tower destroying. Oh, okay. Like, you but know... Well, it's like basically your whole the whole concept is like okay the the birds okay the, the pigs have built some have built a fortress now you gotta now you gotta destroy all the piggies in there. Yeah. And uh, okay. In rescue the eggs. The okay. The the yes. Yep. But the thing is, they they spun off into like different games. Now the Transformers one I think is Tower Defense. Uh. But I still I think there's a lot of elements still destroying things as well. I linked the I linked the trailer onto the um, on on our on our private chat here on Skype. Okay, I'll I'll check it out when I have the chance. All right. So. Okay, so on top of that, I just also want to mention that there's a new video game type movie coming out soon called Pixels. Yeah. AKA I know. Movie never whatever. Well, AKA Futurama the live action uh, the Futurama episode live action version. AKA Adam Sandler does this for another money grab. Well, well, it could be good. Well, here's the thing. Here's where, here's where I'm. Here's where I think I might be a little bit more like. Um, here's where I, li I might be a little bit more like you know maybe this might be good because apparently like the rest of the movies he's made, yeah, they're cash grabs. But apparently he's been um, Adam Sandler himself has been has been like trying to get this movie for like I think the last. Three years now. So this is kind of a this is one of those projects he's been. Yeah, he has been pushing for a while, and no one wanted to do it. But for those who don't know, the idea is that basically aliens invade, but they invade as like 1980s video game characters. Like, yeah, it was based on the short. Yeah, it was like that little short from um, Futurama, where Fry well, tries to defend the world from video game characters. Well, not only that, they, they there was a short before this. That's what got him interested. It basically hit like. Basically, like little space invaders come from Earth, and they they start shooting everything down and turn transform the world into pixels. Spoilers for a short a web short that I don't think that I don't think is available on the internet. Anymore. You can probably never find again. Yeah, it'll probably be on the DVD when this gets released. Um, I'll I'll say this. Look, I did avoid talking about this because Adam Sandler movies always just make me worried, which is unfortunate because he's had some good ones over the years. And so oh, like, God. go on. So certain ones that got like overshadowed that no one ever saw, like bedtime stories. I watched while I couldn't sleep. One time it was on like a like one a.m. or something, and I just couldn't sleep, so I just sat through it. And I was like, I really enjoyed this. It's about a creative guy who has this wild imagination and telling stories to his nephews and stuff, and and how just like imagining things makes life easier for him. Like I kind of liked it as a concept. I think it could have been a little bit deeper and probably a little bit better written, but not a bad movie. And a friend of mine recently, my last trip to LA, forced me to watch um, Adam Sandler and friends go to Africa. I don't remember. Blended. The movie was called Blended. 
he forced me to watch Blended, which was surprisingly better than it should have been. Like, it had it, it was better than it had any right to be. And, you know, I was like, okay, well, when you're not, like, phoning it in, I mean, you're not doing a whole, hey, look at me, I'm a mentally retarded. When you're actually just playing, like, a regular character and trying to do a regular story, you do a really good job of it. You know, so Adam Sandler is just the master of hit and miss. And even the movies of his that, like, I know there's plenty of people who hated Blended. So I just thought, I was like, this isn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I don't want to really want to sit through this again, but I don't regret sitting through it the first time. You know, so I know that Adam Sandler can do something kind of entertaining if he really wants to. And if this is a passion project, I've heard really good things about Hotel Transylvania, which I think was another one of his little passion projects. Well, that's a, well pa that was actually a passion project from Guinea Tardofsky. Oh, well. Still, that's the that, 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 Actually, believe it or not, that is a good movie, like, regardless. That, that's what I've heard from a lot of people. Um, I haven't actually seen that one. That, that's all, but that's all Guinea, man. We all know how much we love Guinea. Yeah, getting like shot that. so we're, you know, that, that's its own thing. Well, I'm, I'm looking through the rest of the cast. It looks pretty good. They got they got Sean Bean in this movie? What? <laughs> is, he re is he really strapped for that much money, also for the Game of Thrones money? He just wants the Skrilla. No, again, it's the <laughs> trying to be something else. And hopefully he doesn't die in this movie. Watch him die, he's like, oh, not again. <laughs> You really should say that, by the way. If he does get killed by anything, you should go, not again. Because, <laughs> like, like, everyone who knows his Jerry, character will find that like in Spaceballs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the John <laughs> <laughs> I think I just broke, I think I just broke Ramsey's. That's the same guy for me. I think it's it really... Credit for Spaceballs, it says John Hurt as himself. He's not even playing the character of Spaceballs, he's just playing himself. And he dies the same way as he dies in Alien. Uh, oh, spoiler, John Hurt dies in Alien. And also he, dies, he also dies in Spaceballs. Also dies in Spaceballs, spoiler for Spaceballs. I mean, like, here's the thing, I, ha I, like, I, like, I can't, there's a part of me that wants to hate on a movie because it has Adam Sandler and Kevin G. It's like, alright, that's already right off the bat, like, this is gonna be horrible. But everything else, know. Bill and Bill and I now pronounce you Bill and Mark or whatever. Oh, that, something or another. It's another Adam Sandler movie. That was great. That had them together, fake gay married. It's, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so the, the thing is, I I'll secretly admit I did like King of King of Queens, but then it's like that's pretty much as far as it'll go. But that wasn't a Happy Madison production. That was done by whoever did that sitcom. Yeah. But um, yes, I, Kevin James' stand-up is pretty decent. I've probably seen some of his stand-up on like uh, Comedy Central or something. I thought that was pretty funny. So. Yeah, so he's he's all right, depending on what you give him. Josh Gad is in the movie, so Olaf, kids like Olaf. He, again, Peter fucking Dinklage again. <laughs> oh man, man, I I hope he plays little Mario and then he eats a mushroom and then they get some other actor to play like big Mario. That'd be amazing. Sam, I, I keep. Peter Dinklage as Eddie Plant, Sam's bash, brash former game playing nemesis and member of the team. The character's physical appearance is, is personality is styled after real life Pac Man and Donkey Kong champ Billy Mitchell. All right, oh, oh, this he's character just ever. This guy, this guy is gonna be the greatest character ever. He's gonna send a video cassette of his of his world record to it, and that's how he wins. <laughs> yes, with with uh, green green grainy video cassette, no less. So that. Uh... Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> Watch well, King of Kong, people. It's amazing. It will make you hate Billy Mitchell with like a fiery passion. Exactly. That's why. That's why Billy Mitchell's always a joke. Whenever I see like, whenever I see like a big pack bang, I like, hey, where's, where's Billy Mitchell? We can't have him here. And and I've heard. Well, I've heard the guy who uh, who made it. I've heard him interviewed, and he's like, I wasn't trying to make Billy Mitchell into a bad guy. He was just kind of a dick to me anytime I tried to interview him about stuff. Yep. He's like. I, I just put him as he was in real life. I'm not trying to make him a bad guy. He's just a dick. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it's nice to actually hear that when the guy's like, I was trying to make this an even thing. I originally wanted to make it about him. <laughs> he was just being a dick the whole time. <laughs> so I made it about one of his competitors. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, like, well, th there you go. I mean, you'll, you'll and, and because of that, anyone who sees King of Kong is like, Billy Mitchell is the world's biggest douchebag. <laughs> Uh -huh. And Peter Dinklage is essentially playing Billy Mitchell. I'm freaking in. That that is pretty awesome. 
And the other, the other, the other person that's kind of known in this movie is Brian Cox. But again, Brian Cox is in everything. It's like what? Brian Cox is in what movie now? He's one of those guys. who's like, oh shit! It's, 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 it's Brian Cox. I didn't know he was in this shit. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. that's pretty much it for like anybody known in this movie. Like I well, said, I have I have my I have my um. Wait, Chris Columbus made this movie? Okay. All right. Uh, like Home Alone, Chris Columbus. Yes. Harry Potter One, Chris Columbus. Yes. Goonies, Chris Columbus. Yeah. So I'm like, mm, I'm starting to actually look. This look a little bit better. I, I will say this: worst case scenario, if we're all together when this movie comes out, someone you know sneaks in a thing of schnapps or what have you. And we can just like, or or a flask. If one of us has a flask, just one of those small like booze bottles you can actually fit inside. Yeah, travelers, if you want, whatever. And we we sneak some booze into the theater. We booze up our drinks, and we just enjoy it for the stupidity that it is. Agreed. I mean, look, I'm not expecting this to be Wreck It Ralph. I'm not expecting this to be you know cinematic genius like the Super Mario Brothers movie. I'm expecting this to be stupid, like the Super Mario Brothers movie. So. <laughs> You know, either way, it really kind of works. By the way, for anyone who doesn't, who didn't get that joke, the, the joke is the fact that the Super Mario Brothers movie is both genius and completely stupid. Uh-huh. And, and it is. It is the most brilliantly done movie that has nothing to do with its source material, and it does a really great job of making up its own source material. <laughs> At the same time, it's freaking terrible, and the behind-the-scenes stuff is amazing. Yep. I yep. wish they did more behind-the-scenes documentaries, because... Uh, Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo have both admitted to being constantly drunk during the filming of this because of how poorly produced Super Mario Brothers was. I think Bob Hoskins also had a uh, thing of saying he had no idea what the source material was when he did it. Yeah, I think he. I think he knew like six. I think he knew like a few days before what it was when his when his when he found that when his kids found out that the movie what the movie was making. They showed it to him like what the fuck. This has nothing to do with the script that I was, I've was i been reading. Yes. So, yes, it's, it's, it's that kind of insanity behind the scenes on that one. This one has had a much better behind the scenes thing going. It's, it seems very positive and I'm willing to give it a chance. Um, because I don't see this as Adam Sandler playing like, I'm Adam Sandler. I, I see him being like, I'm Adam Sandler. I'm just kind of a silly guy who's kind of tall and awkward. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, why not? Plus, I love the contrast of the fact that like Adam Sandler and uh, and uh, oh, what's his face? Oh, God, who was um, Peter Dinklage? Was, Peter Dinklage. I think he was playing the rival character, or if you basically have this like awkward tall guy, and his and his rival is a midget or little person, dwarf, whatever the proper term is, uh, Middle Earthian. Um, so that to me is amazing. Because I love the fact that, that someone in casting came up to like, like, you know what, Adam Sandler is tall and awkward. Let's get the shortest person we can possibly get to play his rival. Peter Dinklage. Is he available? Yes. Okay, let's do it. He wants me to act in an Adam Sandler movie. I don't know. I guess I could do that. Wait, uh, well, he's, he's, actually, he's actually from Jersey, so it's like, yeah, whatever. Okay, cool. He's from Jersey, too. I, I, Sweet. I always put the accent on him, and I realized, yeah, it's probably not his actual natural accent. <laughs> He's from Joyce. Like, he, 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 so I'm working with Adam Sandler. I'm going to work with that fool again. Okay, fine. Let's do this. Oh, uh, man. I hope he jerseys up his accent for this. <laughs> <laughs> Just this like, crazy thick Jersey accent. <laughs> Blow everyone's mind. I thought he was British. <laughs> his last name is Dinklage, for God's sake. Yeah. That just sounds like a British name. Nope. <laughs> I'm Lord Dinklish of Abernathy. Mm, yes. We have so got like we're doing we're doing a Superman turn around the world here. So, um, is there any other video game related movie stuff that we should be aware about other than like they're making another Resident Evil movie that I really want to like not watch? No. Again, booze helps. Well, no, because oh my gosh, I I should mention I, I should even mention. Jared, what's our time hmm. so far? What mark are we at? We are at the 130 range. Okay. So we're at the end of the show. We can basically wrap up. We have definitely had a lot of side things going on here that I didn't expect to become as large of conversation topics as they did. 
I'll, I'm going to say right now, if find me at a convention, find me on Facebook, find me on Twitter, I will gladly tell you the sob story about me watching Resident Evil 4. What's the one oh, in the we, desert? We can just, three? That's three. Three's in the desert. That movie is, is terrible. Well, let's just have an after show discussion of Resident Evil movie. What's oh, wait. Okay. You're talking about. We, we can. You're talking about the actual live action. We can movie, have an after. Right? And not the. Yeah, he's talking about the live I mean, What are the toy people? Talking about movies, Miguel. No, but they made a Resident Evil movie. Damnation or Resurrection. Not Resurrection. <laughs> something. CG. That was a CG one. It's called that was equally Degeneration. Bad. Degeneration. No, that. Yeah. Actually, good. Yeah. I like those. It was a giant thing. Yes. No, it, it does exist. It was a giant pain series. Voice direction was done by Mary McGlynn. I remember her talking about it at a convention. I have the movie and she, here. She was annoyed with the zombie noises they had to make because they were told they had to do the uh zombies. And she's like, but I like the growly zombies we do in America with that. <laughs> so she basically had half the extras do the uh, loud, res uh, stereotypical Resident Evil moan zombies, and then you have to do like the raspy American stylized zombies. What was I say? Which I didn't want to correct her and say the moan style zombie is a reference to like Night of the Living Dead and the Return of the Living Dead movies. Yeah. Um, where where they actually had the moaning noise, not the uh, raspy noise. The raspy noise is more of a modern creation. But I'm a freaking horror movie nerd, so of course I would know that. But I, I didn't want to correct her on it because I felt that'd make me sound like an ass. But now, as does this actually. Story kind of makes me sound like an ass too. Anyways, the point I was gonna get at. The CGI movies, great. Live action movies, oh god damn it. Are terrible and totally worth talking about post show. So that forces people to watch the post show video if they want to hear that discussion. Yes. So until assuming, then assuming the um, I will keeps do going on because A I'm just uh, money money grinding right now. So I'm collecting that Skrilla. We can switch up games. Again, that's a post-show discussion. Let me wrap up the show, guys, and then we can discuss what to do next. Agreed? All right. Somewhat Good. agreed. Um, as always, you can find us on Twitter, SR underscore Secret Stage, where we have updates as to when we're going to be live streaming and various thoughts on video games. You can find us on Facebook, Secret Stage Games, where we occasionally post stuff, I think, um, our YouTube is always active. We always get new stuff on YouTube, and we're going to try to get some more reviews and things like that. Um, some of that's my fault for being super lazy. Sorry, folks. Some of that's not my fault. Um, we're going to have I think you know, all of us are lazy. Yeah, I take responsibility, too. I have something here, too, that I should have reviewed, but you know what? Damn it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to take it out at least by next week. I promise. I swear Anyhow, by you Jared's head. Oh, thanks. Good. I wanted to be decapitated if you can't actually achieve your goals. Okay, good. Anyways, keep going. Uh, you can find that, of course, YouTube.com. We are at uh, Secret Stage Games there. So just search for Secret Stage Games. You can find us, including our most popular video, Ramsey's Plays Godzilla for the PS3. Uh -huh. Which, why isn't that out yet, folks? Because they, actually, oh, they, got, they, got, they, got, they, they pushed it out to PS4. It's PS4 uh, so it's now in the United States. Okay, I'm fine with that. Hopefully they do a graphical improvement, just because why not? And that game looked pretty pretty to begin with. And finally, of course, for anything Scarlet Rhapsody related, you can find us find it all at scarlet-rhapsody.com. The one shots comic reviews, which have been making a comeback. The most recent one is my Darth Vader review. However, my Lady Killer review is right on the edge. And uh, our boss actually did the gem review, so you can check those out. In addition to other convention-related stories we have, and other just nice little convention nerd life articles we do as well. So again, that's scarlet-rapsy.com for everything Scarlet Rapsy related. All right. Until next time, this is Jared for Ramsey's Miguel, background Becky, and baby Miguel saying game over and winners don't use drugs. And a secret to everyone. It's usually my line there, Rams. But whatever, you can have it. Well, but he sniped it. Gotta get quicker, son. For comics, do you review older comics at all? Um, we're trying to be more newer stuff, but depends. Because this is just basically, we're basically just bringing back the old uh, articles. We haven't really made huge choices as to what is and what's not. I'm trying to start going through my more current queue. 
But if a series is compl- a complete series or a complete storyline, then yes, I'd prefer to cover it when it's completed. That's why our most recent things, I mean, the last two I did, you know, Lady Killers, Complete Lady Killer, and uh, Star- uh, Darth Vader was the first five issues, because I wanted to have a bigger view than my old one or two issue versions, even though Jam is only based off two issues, but whatever. But yes, go, go on, Becky. <laughs> Babies do. They're getting into He's stuff. getting into my patterns. I need more. No, there's a dark, there's a comic in the dark that Dark Horse has out that's got my interest and I want to see if it's finished or not. Well, that would be great. Well, I'm going to finish it before the Beast of Burden comes out. The Beast of Burden. I'm not sure. That might be completed by now. I haven't seen it posted by now. The volumes are online to read. This is where I'm going to stop on the stream. That's it for now. Hang tight if you want to listen to the after show. Otherwise, thanks for listening and keep tuned in. As always, blah, blah, blah. Every information scrolling on the bottom. And that is pretty much it. Game over. Winners don't the drugs. Secret everybody. And so on.